feel like we're both just chilling right now. I feel like like heavy food does that to you. Like it grounds you. I just feel good. I think it's the carbs. I think carbs make you like think slow. Yeah, it just like grounds your energy. So you're just not as in your in your head. It's, it's less air. Like for me, if I'm hungry, my thoughts, I have way more mental activity or like anxiety up here. I think it's just like it spikes your ins insulin. That's why keto is so good for you because your I insulin never spikes when you don't eat carbs. How long? You did that for like two months? I think I did it for three months the first time I did keto. I was at a plateau, dude. I was running. Remember when I was running half an hour every day, like literally every day? I weighed myself and I would be at the same weight. It's fine because I feel like my body was also changing in a good way. Like I felt like my, like my legs were getting more, more muscular when I was running. But I think like I just want my weight to be lower and i just felt like i wasn't getting anywhere doing running and i was going ham on the treadmill running it's like, and it's like okay i'm gonna run so hard and i'm not even lose a single pound that's wrong it's that set so, point set point be doing you dirty like your body wants to stay at that stable place i don't believe in that you've experienced that before though that's what it is it's like when you when you don't when your body won't allow you to like lose weight and people hit a plateau it's because set point theory also ties into that where your body no but is it's mind over it's mind over matter though like i wasn't losing weight because i was eating as much as i was burning that that was the whole thing uh, but i bet you if you were eating below what you were burning that you would definitely lose weight it's like simple math people don't understand that so it's not were, that difficult you were running every day and all that but you feel like you were still eating what you wanted that's probably why i was eating what i wanted because i felt like oh i did such a good run today i'm just gonna chow down on this pizza <laughs> cookie Oh, I ate so much cookies. I feel like I'm there right now too. Like I've hit a plateau. That's why I said you gotta, you gotta, when you hit a plateau, you gotta go, I don't want to give this advice, but you really have to go the extra mile to break through that. Cause I've hit many plateaus throughout my journey to losing weight. I know. Yeah. And I've been like thinking about keto. Cause like the other thing is there's so much science backing it being a healthy diet and it being having a high success rate if you can do it. And I don't feel like you necessarily will feel like super deprived. You can still eat so much. Let me tell you, the first time I did it, I felt I felt deprived. Did you? Okay, I so was, tell me about the first time that you, you did keto. I cut out, I didn't even, because they said you should gradually cut out carbs, but I'm just like, nah. <laughs> I was like, screw that. I want to get results immediately. <laughs> so I cut out carbs. I think I ate like maybe 10 grams of carbs a day. That's Or crazy. less. Yeah. Because anything that had carbs on the label, I just didn't eat it. All I had was smoked salmon, chicken breast, pork, and I had, a, I had, I had like Caesar dressing as my sauce, because surprisingly Caesar dressing has no carbs carbs well it's, it's all it's just cream so all i had was just like meat and the only only vegetables you're really allowed to eat is like brussels sprouts and cauliflower and that contributes to like the carbs i had brussels sprout and cauliflower is all you're allowed to eat well, i'm sure you can eat other vegetables but those are like those broccoli. are the two like picked I'm, I'm pretty sure you can eat broccoli and like spinach and like onions <laughs> I think there's like that the sugar count in onion is a bit higher and so is broccoli. Like if you were to choose between broccoli and cauliflower, you definitely want to go cauliflower because I think the sugar cu content in broccoli is a little higher. You were probably doing like really extreme then. Oh yeah, I was strict. The first week I lost like three pounds. It's probably water weight because it was keto, yeah. but I saw the result and I was like, I was hooked. And, and then know? after that, gradually, I only lost a pound a week. And you like, you didn't gradually cut out. Any, like, no i went i went hard the first week you're like so intense with stuff like that i'm scared to like go cold turkey on stuff just given like my history you know maybe we should get into that the beyonce diet that beyonce diet like screwed me up man the master yep. plan so basically <laughs> when I, like when was this like 2015 probably 2015 it was like we were young ducklings yeah and like i went on this crazy diet for 40 days and Master like cleanse. the only it was like a cleanse like i read about like beyonce doing this cleanse and basically all you consume is like lemon cayenne pepper <laughs> <laughs> and like a little bit of maple syrup that's the diet and like i i can't even believe that i did that but like i completed it and like I stayed on it for forty days. It was like a, it was like a water diet too, right? Because you had to put all that ingredient in the water and mix it. Yeah. And you would just drink that. That's the only thing I remember. For forty I days. Would like make. <laughs> <laughs> I would like make a bottle of it, and like I can't even remember to be honest. Like I remember making a bottle of this like substance, and I think I would just like drink it like once a day, and then I would be done. I can't even remember because I feel like I just blacked out like the whole. No, thing. I remember it because I was also doing that diet with you not the master cleanse but i was eating this frozen spinach remember like we went to super oh, went to the God. store and i bought a bunch of frozen spinaches 
don't even know. I can't even. <laughs> We're like today's day. Th- today is day fifteen. Ned stayed over at my house and like we missed the bus and then we had to like climb this hill and like it was like a thirty minute walk up this hill to like get to the other bus to like go to school and like I, I was just like totally out of it. Like my brain cells were like I-, I was like running on my last brain cell and like I remember Ned, come on girl, it's day seventeen. We got was- this and I'm like I don't even know. It's like so toxic. Our mentality back in those days we were just like we were so extreme i literally ate spinach for a week not even good spinach i put them in the microwave with ate- salt and, not even pepper i think just salt because i think pepper has calories so i didn't <laughs> put pepper in there what? like literally you yeah pepper has calories in pepper there's calories in pepper Oh my god. Yeah, like, that was so toxic. Do you know what I mean? I got so sick afterwards. Like, I, like, I don't even know. Because I feel like when you go on something so extreme, it messes with your entire, like, homeostasis. Do you know what I mean? And, like, there's also theories out there saying that, like, your gut health is connected to your brain. So yeah, in that. order for your gut health to be healthy, like, there's all this, like, bacteria and all this stuff in there that kind of keeps your entire system going and healthy. I just feel like the after effects of that were insane like my metabolism was so messed up I gained all that weight back and more I experienced like really bad depression for like a couple years after that yeah I was not normal for a while and so I'm so afraid to like go on diets now you know yeah but the master cleanse was like an extreme I I mean on keto I'm on keto I'm eating I'm eating pork chop I'm not drinking cayenne water (laughs) but just like after that experience and getting so sick like my mom literally took me to the hospital because my stomach was just like it shut down you know I went to the doctor a couple times and nobody could help me this one night I was having a really bad night my mom had to take me to the hospital it was messed up I was I won't get into it but it was like just not a pleasant experience at all so like that was a very extreme we were stupid don't listen to Beyonce you lost weight though at the end didn't you like 20 pounds yeah I did but like if you think about it it's like that was so intense like 20 pounds in 40 days like was it worth it and then I gained it back because it wasn't sustainable that's the problem is like people think it's like when you go on a diet like even with keto it's not sustainable like I'm not gonna say like you should go on keto and make it your lifestyle like people say like oh you can't commit to keto and it's true you can't commit to it you gotta have carbs you're gonna crave sugar once in a while you can't just eat that like stevia stuff all your life. Yeah, so you got you just got to remember when you lose that weight, you can't go back to eating how you were post or pre weight loss. Like if you're 180 and you went down to like 140, you can't eat the same weight as you were when you're 180. So you feel like you can lose that much on keto, but then when you get down there, you know how to like stay within the range while adding carbs back in that you're not going to gain it back. Yeah. I mean, I feel like that's it takes a specific. I'm very disciplined. Yeah, yeah, I feel like it takes a very really disciplined person to do that because a lot of people. When they start eating carbs again, they're like, oh my god, carbs. And then they want to like eat everything, you know? And I feel like I might be a little bit like that. You know what? That's fine. Because I'm not going to say like I didn't mess up at all through my journey. Like I, I've i had some screw ups where I just overeat. Maybe I eat like a box of cookies. It's fine. You just got to remember that, okay, maybe I ate over the what I was supposed to eat on the weekend. Then on the weekday, just make up for it. I just have a really hard time with guilt. But I like you're right. You should just be able to like get over those things. But for me, it's like if I eat the entire box of cookies, like the guilt that I feel after. It's just over. <laughs> spiral me like <laughs> downwards. And so that's why. I feel like just balance so I'm not binging is like right feels better mentally this is for me when I eat bad on the weekends like Saturday and Sunday on Monday I would go on like a cleanse so I would probably eat like 500 calories on Monday like I would eat like way below the minimum to make up for the weekend and on Tuesday I would eat healthier I was I would consider Tuesday to be like a brand new a brand new start where I'm not thinking about what I ate on Saturday and Sunday you eat more balanced from like Tuesday to Friday and then the weekends are a little bit more than Monday's a fast yeah uh do you feel like it's hard for you like mentally though to just like have all these calories one day and then like no calories the next day how does your mood fluctuate do you feel like you can get all of your work done well i would be lying to say like it's not hard like it's definitely difficult to do that yeah because for me if i'm like eating such a small amount of calories in one day it like affects everything because then i don't know about you but like when i'm hungry i can't sleep very well that's one of the symptoms i i have trouble sleeping when i'm hungry <laughs> i'm making you seem like i'm so unhealthy i take like a lot of melatonin to help me sleep yeah like i just feel so. like that is a lot of steps <laughs> It's trial and error as a routine. You have your own routine that you're used to, but for me, yeah. I'm like, that feels like a lot of effort and work and like... Well, I've been on it for so long, right? Well, I've been on this journey for so long. 
Yeah. Keto, like, it's an interesting diet for to me, for sure. Like, I'm a little bit more interested in it because I know, like, I've seen a lot of research and, like, doctors talking about how it can be done in, like, a healthy and sustainable way. You just have to be really careful. I remember eating just, like, bacon for breakfast, and I was still losing weight. So it's like, imagine a diet where you can eat bacon. I mean, I wasn't just, like, munching handfuls of bacon. I mean, I had, like, two and three slices, but still, I'm eating bacon on a diet. When you tell someone that, oh, I'm on a diet and I'm eating bacon. That's crazy. Like, I've seen people's, like, plates for breakfast, and it's, like, there's eggs on there, bacon, yeah. avocado, like, all that stuff mm. looks so good. And, like, now there's that keto bread, too. That doesn't feel, like, deprived at and, all. And, like, once in a while, you do crave that sweet. I mean, there's, like, the keto chocolate stuff. It tastes like freaking desert. <laughs> desert? Yeah, like the Sahara Desert. It's, like, so dry. But when you're two weeks in keto and you're craving that sweet, that's, like, the best thing in your life. Because you can probably, like, you're, real, you're really sensitive to the amount of sugar in it. Oh. The amount of sweetness when, once you cut it out. Man. And so the weight that you lost while you were on keto, did how much of it did you gain back? And then how much of it did you sustain losing? I was stuck at 145 before I started keto. The last weigh-in I was on that I was on keto, I was 127. But do you feel like you've gained back? The whole amount or do you feel like you're just somewhere in the middle if i'm gonna be like in the ballpark range i'm pro i would guess my weight right now is probably 135 so which is not bad considering i was 145 so that's 10 pounds so you still sustain that 10 pound weight loss yeah like i'm not 127 right now because that's hard like at least for me i feel like anything below 130 is like a super hard weight to maintain i don't know i don't i don't really like weighing myself either because it's just it's such a downer i'm, I'm more i can feel when i gain weight and i can feel when i'm like skinnier so i don't really think i would weigh myself yeah i've also been in phases where i'm like ocd about checking my weight so like check in the morning check it at night and it's like it's no, not gonna yeah. really change you know you <laughs> You might as well just like stick to something for a couple months and then check it. Like being obsessed about your weight is like not helpful in my no, opinion. I don't... It's just not helpful because then you're just like maybe one week like you're you don't lose anything but you're still sticking to your diet and then you feel discouraged, right? But it's like the human body is crazy. Like it goes through all these fluctuations. It could even just be water. Maybe you need to just like go to the bathroom, you know? So like depending so much on your weight is like not healthy all the time i would say the only time i would like religiously weigh myself like every week would be when i'm when i know i'm on a diet like when i when i started keto i weigh myself every week and because like i wanted to know if it's working right like i don't want to stick to this diet if it's not gonna work right because when i go on diets i don't cheat so it's like if it's not working that i know it's not working it's not me mm. it's not like oh i had i had a i had a i had a meal i had cheat day it's like yeah that's why it didn't work because you cheated but i don't cheat so it's like if it's not working for me then it's not working like as long as you're losing yeah like that's the whole point when I, that's the whole point when i go on diet it's like I, I, to lose weight to lose weight i want to go down but what if one week you don't go down i never had that happen so even if it's like one pound that's still enough for you i've had like 0. 0.8 of a pound and that's you're still at it yeah i mean if, if i'm if i'm losing it's fine mm -hmm. it means it means it means something is working like i didn't cheat i stick right to the diet to the point i'm not like overeating i know i didn't cheat so it's like if i see that i'm losing weight it's like okay yeah it's real it's not like oh I, it's just like water weight you're losing it's like no i stuck to the diet i know what i'm eating i know the calorie so I lost weight and it works. And that encourages me to continue. And that's when I really weigh myself. I need to check the numbers and the records. But like when I'm just doing my normal life, I don't weigh myself doing that. Right. But if I were to decide to go back on like keto and like a strict routine, then I would start weighing myself again weekly. Yeah, that makes sense. Because you don't want to be like putting in all this effort and nothing's working. Yeah. It's like if it's not working, I'm not going to do this keto thing because it sucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it does. Oh my gosh. The first time I did it, it was... My body was like craving carbs, but then the second time I did it again, it was so easy. So what made it easier the second time? Uh, the second time I was already in Calgary and I decided like the last two weeks before I left back to Montreal, I was like, I'm going to start keto. I just decided to do it. And I just ate like steak. <laughs> Right. That's probably why I made it easy. So I just had like steak for the last two weeks in Calgary. I wasn't craving sugar at all. Like when I was back in Montreal, I continued it for like the next two months. Yeah, I feel like what people say is like once you get into that state, your your body yep. will just get used to it and then you stop craving sugar. I think like it was a lot easier for me to get back into keto because I just had like the three month experience. So I guess my body was probably like, used to that. I didn't get any keto flu. I didn't get like any dizziness and lightheadedness. Mm -hmm. I got that the first time because I had like, I think the first week I almost like threw up because I was like so dizzy from being on keto. And the tip is like, you're supposed to eat a lot more salt than you're used to. So I just had like these little like chicken cubes, like mm -hmm. chicken soup cubes. And I just put them in like hot water. I drink that and it cures your headache like immediately. That makes sense because... It's probably like just losing all the water in your system. 
Oh yeah, you lose a lot of water weight when you start keto. That's why it's so good. And it's like, no matter what you eat, not what you eat, but like no matter how much meat you eat and how much salt you consume, when you're on keto, you don't even feel bloated. Wouldn't that be expensive just eating steak every day? I think you switch to pork. Pork is really cheap. Yeah, you said that you like ate steak every day. It's so <laughs> expensive. I swear to God, I probably ate like a cow, like a whole cow. The amount of steak I ate when I was in Calgary. <laughs> <laughs> like the 36 ounce ones. That's hilarious. I also really like like that uh, carbonate bread because it has a lot of fiber in it. Oh, yeah. Because on keto, one of the problems is that you don't get any fiber. So this bread is like a miracle bread for people on keto. Like, if you're on keto, you got to have the carbonate bread. And Costco. Costco is like, it's like a heaven, people on keto. They have so many keto stuff now. Keto chocolate bar, keto peanut butter cups, keto ice cream bars. They have keto Did you know ice that? cream? They have keto ice cream bar. I mean, dude, you're eating ice cream bars. That's keto. That's so crazy. So it's just like so easy. I mean, don't go crazy on it because it's a lot of calorie. Right. <laughs> but like one one popsicle a day when you, or like whenever you're craving sugar. Do you try to stop eating earlier? No food after six. Yeah, because I feel like when I saw results, like one of the things I did is I would stop eating before, like like a few hours before bedtime. And it just helps your body like digest better. Like periods of my life where I've seen weight gain, I would be eating like it at night or I would just hold off eating before. Maybe it does affect like the efficiency, the way your body burns calories. Because when you're sleeping, I think your, meta- your metabolism does slow down. Yeah. And then all of this heavy food is sitting in your system all night. You have no time to burn it off or digest it properly. Right. Then you wake up with a gut. Like people are promoting like the intermittent fasting thing so much right now. Like, pe- like it's... It's pretty good for you if you can do it. I think it's healthy for your body to just like cool down. Like, dude, you don't have to be eating constantly. Like, I'm hungry. I gotta eat. Exactly. Even with keto, like there's all those snacks, but it's like, you know, if I, if you get keto crackers, then you just eat the whole freaking box. So people who do decide to get the, like the keto stuff from Costco, you gotta be careful because they are really high in calorie, even though they are keto. Because like, let's be honest, you're not going to lose weight if you're going to eat over calorie because it does, you still have to cut down a little bit. Like those peanut butter cups, they're like 70 calories a cup and like this small. And you can easily eat like three of those. Take you straight out of ketosis. It's not going to take you out, but you're going to be overeating your calorie. You're eating bacon and like eggs and freaking butter. It'll take you out. How are you counting your carbs? Are you counting, are you counting net carbs? You're supposed to count the net, but that could, it could, yeah. if you're eating like a lot of those keto crackers though or something, you could easily go over like the 20 gram of carb recommended. Right? You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. Because those, um, the chocolate things we're talking about, I think the net carbs for one is four grams of carbs. That's a lot. You eat four of those and like your day is done like game over (laughs) (laughs) but like just in case people who don't know like the the carbs you're counting does not include like the the sugar alcohols that are in the keto chocolate so at the back of the label you know i say it's like even though it says carbs you gotta you gotta minus that from your net carb because i remember those chocolate bars i think it was like 13 grams of carbs i'm like how the hell is this keto and then i was like googling like how you really add in the carbs and i was like oh you subtract like all this information and then at the end it was like four grams of net carb you're allowed 50 grams of carbs when you're on keto because your brain needs needs yeah your brain needs carbohydrate to like think okay so you mean like 50 but then not counting the net carbs like not counting the fiber or do you mean 50 net carbs 50 net carbs that's how much you were eating 50 net carbs a day probably less but i'm saying like you're allowed it oh that's like the keto diet you're allowed 50 like i might be wrong but i feel like it would work best if you're doing a little bit lower what did you want i had a pizza my mom made this like stir fry type thing it's just had like a bunch of veggies tofu and coconut milk okay coconut milk that's good for keto though yeah but that's really high in calo stir fry is tricky (sighs) a minute on the lip lifetime on the hips Oh my god. Yeah, but like when you see something delicious, like today, for example, there was that pizza there and you were like, oh my god, you can smell it, you can see it, you're like, I'm gonna have a slice. I had one slice, yeah, but like I didn't eat any more than that. I cut myself after one. Yeah, that's really good. So you don't feel yeah. like it negatively affects you, just kind of not if I have one. Like if okay, if I'm gonna if I want a pizza, I'm gonna have a piece of pizza. If I want a piece of cookie today, I'm gonna have a cookie. I'm not gonna be like, Oh, I'm not gonna eat a cookie. Right. Like I'm not, I'm not freaking torturing myself. Okay. I'm really, I'm actually kind of happy with my lifestyle where it's like people, like the way I'm making it sound like, oh, it's so tough. Like, where you got to like not eat on Mondays. Like it's not that hard. 
It's like I'm not depriving myself, okay? If I want a cheeseburger, I would eat a cheeseburger. It's just weird, like, when you become more, like, aware of health, you just don't really crave those foods anymore. Because I remember back in the day, I used to, like, always go, like, fast food and stuff. And I just don't really do that anymore. Like, I don't care. I cut out a lot of Vietnamese food. I used to be, I used to love Vietnamese food. In my, like, old days, I used to be obsessed with eating it. I would eat it, like, every weekend on the dot. I've been to, like, one of them that has the sandwiches there. They're so Ooh, good. The sandwich is so good with a pate. Dude, you're looking at like 2,000 calories. What? Dude, how much calorie do you think is just the bread? Like a piece of baguette that big? That's at least 700. And it's huge. It's a foot long. 2,000 calories? Will you add in the meat and all the um, butter and the, the, the sugar from the saute? Dude, at least... Okay. Oh my god, I will. 1,500. Let's say 1,500. And I used... In my old days, I used to eat two of those. Two. I used to eat two, and then after that, I would go for bubble tea. <laughs> oh my god. 